Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another episode of Junkyard Digs. It's almost May, and you know what that means. It's time to go to a NASCAR race. Hi. So if you guys remember a year ago, we picked up a camper for like 1500 bucks, fixed it up on a weekend, and took it all the way to Kansas City, and had a whole mess of bush lights and a whole pile of fun. In fact, we had so much fun that we're gonna do it again with an even more disastrous camper this year. This right here is an I don't know what year Winnebago that was absolutely free on Facebook Marketplace. So that being said, let's go dig around and see what the hell we just got. I think he said it was sitting for about three to five years since it last drove. And when it last drove, they had some problems where they had to like stop and finish to keep it running, so. Whoa! <laughs> 1982. Winnebagio. Oh hell yeah, it comes with coloring book pages. So um, I can't help but notice that the ground moves underneath me. You should try the roof. <laughs> you want to talk it. about moving underneath you. Oh, oh, it's a little squishy right here. Is that a turtle lamp? Oh, dibs, dibs. <laughs> That's mine. Looks like we have no battery power to anything. I've learned a few things about campers since we've started these endeavors. <laughs> Yeah, our, well, two batteries. One that runs the engine and everything up there, and a second one that runs all this stuff. And then when the engine is on and running, a solenoid will close and link those two batteries so they can both be charged up. I think there's supposed to be a chair out of Oh, I broke it. I broke your camper. No, Mook, this is our camper. I want to share these problems with everyone. I don't want to take full responsibility for crap. This has more counter space than our actual kitchen. <laughs> like, what? It's like, look at this thing is so fancy. Some bitch got a sink on an angle. You can tell no one has ever quartered hard in this because this still exists. Yeah. <laughs> I don't think this thing does anything hard except for crash. We've got ourselves a sizable <laughs> fridge. I got a jar! <gasps> oh, two jars! Oh my god, what's this plate? <laughs> Kevin! Look at this awesome plate I just found. <laughs> this is Kevin's plate. Some bitch got a freezer in it and it works. Because it's 30 degrees and windy as hell outside today. Moving in the back, we have a full-size shower in this one. Like, I might even fit in this thing. Yep. It's just under six foot two. All right, you guys, let me know when you get this some bitch running. Okay. Let's run away. Have you seen the vent, though? Oh, that's fine. I won't worry about that little guy. <laughs> it's just structural. So despite looking rather decent inside and being the cleanest camper we've got yet, this one has a decent amount of water damage and structural issues above and below, unfortunately. Okay, actually, before we get to the engine... Are there brownies in this one? <laughs> Dude, it's a bed. <laughs> it's a freaking bed. There's at least one person. Two. Oh no. This probably folds down into three, and there's the whole bed in the back, so we can sleep way more than we could in the last ca ah, last time we went to a NASCAR race. All right, big moment of truth. I don't even know what we're running in this thing. Oh, hell yeah, that's a big block Chevy right there. That, ladies and gentlemen, is a freaking 454. 96,000 miles on this one. I thought we'd have a really low mile 454, but uh, I was wrong. All right, let's go get a battery and see if anything comes alive. See if we have any shot in hell pulling this one off. Okay, I was expecting a full hood, I, I guess. We have this little Hitler stash cap. Oh yeah, let's put the put the hood prop up. <laughs> well, our tires are pretty dry rotted, so that's not great. I don't know why I was able to tell that from within here, but that's literally all I can see is a radiator and tires. And yeah, one dipstick. All right, gang, let's start the hunt for the batteries. I don't know where they are. There's a bean can. That's the poop hose. Uh-oh, we don't have a gas cap. Oh, shit, are you serious? Yep. Hmm, I'm sure that won't be a problem. Is it? Oh. Wow, that's Whoa. seriously a battery tray. Yeah. I'm hoping these two are for accessories, and this is our motor. Let me just... <laughs> I mean, they're dead. Isn't it plastic? <laughs> no, it's metal. Oh. All right, got a new battery in there. Get a little 850 amp. Should do some damage. <laughs> ah. 
That was easy. Just needed some muscles. <laughs> wow, this thing is its kind of in there, I'm not going to lie. <laughs> Can we go to Dairy Queen? No. Please. Once the corn is in. <laughs> Ow. Again. Well, we have no dash lights or anything. But we have an engine that spins, so that's, I mean, that's step one, right? Do we have a brake pedal? I pray to God we do. Yes? Your seat moves more than the brake pedal. <laughs> <laughs> that's fine. <laughs> Looks like we got ourselves a big old four barrel quadrajet. So obviously once we get this running, we're gonna have to do the lid flip. But until then, uh, we have an HEI distributor back here in the back, this big old boy. As long as our connections are good, we've got power to everything, we should have spark. As long as our module is good as well, which they always are. So, I guess I'll go grab my little gas can thing and drizzle some down that carb and see if it makes any noise. I have no quadrajet parts. Again? Watch your noggin. Yeah, clock works. That's the first time, I think, on the channel we've had a working clock. You can see how unlevel we are. We are four unlevel. That, no, that's almost five! Almost five unlevel units. Jeez. All right, let's dribble a little gas down this sucker. Pull all the water up into the carburetor. That's what we like. Here we go. She thought about it. So we got spark, that's good. Let's hey, she shot up to 30 PSI. wires still present well it runs let's go throw some fuel in the tank because believe it or not we're indicating it's a chevy we're indicating the fullest it could ever be and we'll just throw three gallons in it and crank it and see if it runs Kevin, that's like a hundred dollars it's a windy day out on the prairie full of really annoying dogs yeah that one we'll just put a sail on and sail the rest of the way home <laughs> today we could head out on the road face it downwind and head on home Yes, thank you for agreeing with me. Let's see if she'll pull fuel. Oh, now the church is barking. <laughs> Come on, you old son of a bitch. that was the bowls. <laughs> exhaust was a little smoky. Was it? Yeah. It's a little clanky. It makes a few fun noises. <laughs> Come on girl. To life with you. the exhaust over there but hell yeah we got ourselves a running camper oh now the train's barking this is a really loud town is it just me or is this whole thing kind of doing one of these maybe a little bit let's not worry about it <laughs> i like that plan the cabinets are becoming structural 
All right, well, let's check some fluids over quick and uh, shove this thing in gear and see if it moves. This has gone really easy so far. I'm sure there will be something very tragic that happens later to make up for it. Jeez. Oil's good. <laughs> this has two dual exhausts. It's on full side. It's got true duels on this son bitch. Hell yeah, brother. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing but the best for Winnebago. Didn't your grandpa probably build this thing? He worked at Winnebago, right? He was, uh... He was built in Iowa, by the way. Four City. Four City, Iowa. My grandpa worked there for like his entire career. Yeah, my last name's actually Winnebago. <laughs> <laughs> what? I'll be right here for moral support the whole time. Oh, thank you. You missed. I'm just gonna put it all in, because then we can say we tried our best, because that's all we have. I, how am I supposed to tell if there's coolant in this thing? It's not flowing out, so I guess it's not completely over full. I can't see anything. That means fill it. Yeah, I guess so. I see why these damn things get just abandoned all the time. It's a pain in the ass to work on compared to the other ones. Go! All right, I'm gonna hop in again, fire this up, see if we got any brake boost now since we're finally marking on the power steering stick. And if I do, or even if I don't, I will Let's try to drive it out of the hole, I guess. There we go. Needed muscles, again. Thank God I brought Moo. <laughs> oh, it just fires right off. All right, we got drive. were all definitely froze up up front. I watched them go clunk, <laughs> and then they moved. So, so what you're saying is they're not froze anymore? No, not you? anymore. They do sound horrible when they move, but they're not froze. Are you telling me that the wheels on the bus go round and round now? They do now. They did it for a minute. I've definitely seen better tires in my life. You spun the back tires a bit. <laughs> did I really? Yeah. They did a burnout? Yeah. Oh, I'm sure the front brakes won't be an immediate issue on this quite a hole you dug and a lot of dried leaves for a nice fire under there by the gas tank. I'm gonna try to get it up onto this gravel next to us and go up and down the alley a couple times and see if we got brakes, power steering, lights, and then we'll start fixing stuff. Yes, Mook, I question in the back. Yeah, do we have a fire extinguisher? Yeah, there's one in the truck. There's also that gas we can just throw on and just really commit to it. All right, places everyone. Everyone turn the script to page three now. <laughs> That was like driving a house. I'm like 60 feet in the air. The, the smoke, smoke is pouring yeah. out of the window. It's a little stinky in here, I'm not gonna lie. Well shit, we got brakes so and we got steering and everything kind of freed up and leveled out. Whoa. Oh yeah, lights and stuff, what, what we got? You got one working light in the back. How about up front? You got That one, one works. It does weird shit with the blinkers. Yeah, it does. <laughs> well, here's my blinkers, so that's problematic. Well, if it wasn't broke before, it is now. I do not think we're gonna be able to make it all the way to Kansas on these, nevertheless home. 
We're gonna try to make a home on these. We'll take some back roads. We blow out, it's fine. They are bald, dry rotted, cracked, and the bands are actively breaking, so. All we gotta do is make it 50 miles today when we get tires later. This, oh, this is gonna be expensive, and it's gonna suck. And there's a bunch of Chinese, le oh no, those are just regular American numbers. I should probably mention, helping us get the job done today, we've got our decked uh, truck toolbox system, and of course, Tang tools. And this Glacier Mist water bottle, which I'm hoping to turn into a fuel cap. My expectations are low, but my hopes are high. Do -do -do. Do -do. be very excited if the only tool we have to use for this revival is a pair of dikes to cut a plastic water bottle. Splash buffer. Alright. <laughs> Alright, so that's that problem solved. Thankfully there's a gas station like a block that way so we can go get some actual gas in it. I see there's slow children at play. Should we check the gutters as we go by? Yeah, they look good. Merry Christmas, gutters are empty. Gas station. We've got our life saving for the gas into this thing. Nothing on the thermostat yet. That's a whole adventure we haven't even addressed. Does the cooling system work? Hey, look, it's a move. Over there? See, the concerning thing hey. is, oh, Jesus Christ. <laughs> See, the concerning thing is, after I turned it off, as it was spooling down, I still heard that clunk, clunk. That kind of sounds like valve train noise, but if we just get home where it's, you know, warmer, not 50 miles of terrified driving left to do, and uh, there's tools, we can fix it there if it's still around and if it still runs. All right, let's put some gas in it. I just want gas. I don't want your damn car wash. I don't want your damn rewards. I don't want to know about the damn news. Just give me gas. Oh, there it is. It's only under a load. <laughs> When's it ever under a load? It's not like it's a million pound camper driving through hurricane force winds today. All right, let's just look everyone. That little guy. I don't want to worry about that little guy. Are you okay down there? Oh, you know what that is? That's just the metronome. Let's just know how many RPM we're doing since we don't have attack. Or blinkers, I just remembered. Jumping up and down in the back. You can see it on the blinds. You can see it on the blinds. Dude. 
let's, uh, let's go look at what the hell's going on outside. Really bad. Did you see anything? Nothing. Awesome. Tires. All right. Well, we'll keep trying. To keep going. So, what we're feeling is some of this in the front end. You can see it in the wheel. Uh, it kind of comes and goes. Kind of gets worse as we go. Especially changes when we side load it. Apparently, I'm thinking we got a brake line. It's probably swollen or a caliper that's sticky because they're, they're stopped. And I think we got a brake that's acting up and surging, essentially. And then it gets hot and frees itself or something. I, I don't really know. But we probably need tires and we probably need rubber lines. And we probably need a different camper. We made it a total of like five miles. Uh, we're doing 30 don't really have much of a desire to do any more than that. I don't know what just happened, but suddenly it just went dink and we shot off like a rocket. And I never moved my foot, and now we're going 45. I think we had a break or something that was really sticking and just let loose, because it literally just went whoo, like I, like I put my foot to the floor. And now it's smooth as butter. My hell, it fixed itself. Let's go to the races. If I can make it home without using brakes, we'll be good. All right, my point was trying to avoid the police, but sorry, other citizens, but oh shit, it's all the way. I'm calling it now, we're next. We are so next. I believe it's finally happening. Yep, we're getting pulled over. Son of a bitch. All right, uh, we'll talk to you guys in a bit. Well, cops saw the tags were expired, which Iowa, you have 30 days before you got a title something. So we are technically legal. In the meantime, thought I'd pull these bastards down a little. Oh man, the shit we do. Well, Jesse, five years. First time we've ever been pulled over on the channel. Sheriff was super nice about it. She said, look, I know you guys are... Well, Actually, now we're, getting, yeah, now we're getting arrested. <laughs> no, she was super nice about it. She was like, look, I know you guys are just a bunch of freaking idiots. Uh, just be idiots at home and get there. So that's exactly what we're going to do. <laughs> we've got the brake cooled down. I am not going to touch that pedal unless I absolutely have to. Let's get back to it. Oh yeah, it rolls a little easier now. <laughs> so yeah, people always ask, how are you legally doing this? All we have to do here is put insurance on it. We have 31 days to title a vehicle in Iowa. You get 31 days free, essentially, but it's a 31 day convenience to make it to the DMV and get everything done. So we, we abuse that 31 days. Most of our videos are driving on the road within that first 31 before we title stuff. So let's hit the road. Again. Hopefully less interaction from the police force. Is that an Indian eating a horse? Oh, other camper people. Other crazy bastards. That's a lot of stickers. That was something. I think that wasn't a camper. I think that was a mobile. Oh my god, what is that? What is what is this town of Woodward, Iowa? What is happening right now? It's like we belong here. Except for this is maybe too nice. In other news, speaking of campers of that style, usually whenever we do these videos, it's like a white knuckle, horrifying experience all the way there and back. This thing, despite wanting to fall apart constantly, it feels like, doesn't drive bad. Like, it seems pretty normal. I don't know if that's just because it's so much bigger that the chassis is actually meant to hold the weight and transfer it better, but it's windy as hell out today. And I'm not getting blown around. I've always thought the bigger campers are gonna be worse. It seems to not be the case. All right, here's our turn. Hold on, motor. I did it like a race car. Let's see if we can hear the Venturis. Not really. 
No, I don't think we got all four barrels. I especially can't hear a butt. We forgot to flip the lid. That's probably what's going on. About 20 miles this way, and we'll be home. So we can finally assess this thing and see if there's stuff we still need to fix or if we're just playing good to go. It's, it's been getting smoother and smoother. All right, we've made it. Just beyond this hill is home. I'm not gonna show it because you people are weird and they'll all come to my damn doorstep. Don't do that. Let's get this sucker there and get her parked and see if we even really need to do anything before we drive to Kansas. Come on. Oh, it downshifted. Come on. You know, I really didn't get the sensation that we were speeding up. I think we were actually slowing down, but louder. Oh, no. Oh, the wobble's back. Oh. What have we done? Yeah, I think we got some brakes to fix. <laughs> brakes are actively locking up. I uh, it got really hard to move at the end there. We'll deal with that another day. Good morning everyone. It is Monday morning. We leave Friday morning. It's been a month or two since we last touched the camper. The race is at the end of this week and we got some brakes to fix. Usually it's a problem when I forget to uh, take these nuts off before I you know, get the tire off the ground, but as you can tell, that's not an issue today. <laughs> O'Reilly's has parts in stock for this camper. It turns out these are called a Chevy P30 chassis. Same as a bread truck, or like your snap-on trucks, or box trucks, or stuff like that. Very common chassis. We're gonna order up some hoses and hopefully have them here by like noon today. Get this sucker fixed up, clean out the inside a little bit and then take our free pile of shit camper straight to the racetrack once again. Let's get it done. So as you can see, ugh, yeah, I can't turn those. I'm gonna loosen our banjo bolt quick and see if that changes anything. If it does, that's good. That means it's our brake lines. Let's find out. All right. Hey, look at that. All right, throw some new rubber lines on there and we should be good to go up front for brakes. So I'll have to bleed them, of course. But once that's done, uh, I think we'll take it for a test drive and see if the backs have started working or if I'm gonna have to hunt down some hoses. These ones were easy to find. O'Reilly's had them in stock. Those ones are not. It's a triple line. It's a single, uh, like, like you would on a truck. It's a single soft line from the frames hard line to the axle, which I could probably just get one of those from anything, really. But then it goes hard lines out to a set of double soft lines into the calipers. Those, I don't know where to source because they're really weird. I'll get these replaced and then we'll go for a test drive and see if we need the back still. All right, new brake hose is on. Let's give it a go. All right, move down. Up. Hell yes, that is properly operating. On to the other side. Okay, we got new brake hoses up front, got them bled out. Pedal feels completely different. I don't know if that's good or bad. So we're gonna hop in it, go drive around and find out. Our brakes released, nice. This is the part where we crashed into a tree because there's 600 and I don't know where they are. Moves a lot easier now. Let's find out. Pumpcaps are coming for me. They're okay. Oh, 
up. Let's see him set. Ow! Ah, much better. No, that's right. They're hiding. Damn it! Place. So our brake lines are on, the brakes are working great now, we're good to go on that regard. Up next, this thing still kind of runs like crap, as you could probably tell from us driving it around. Right now it has a quadrajet on it, they're very mechanical, and they'll run forever, and it would probably get us down there and back just fine. But, in the event that it doesn't, I don't have any parts to fix it, like none. So, what we're going to do, while we're still home and not on the side of the road somewhere, is put on a 600 CFM brawler. This is an economy carb from Holly. It's built by Holly. Uh, it's got a few awesome features on it. I'm excited to run this thing. I won't really get to play with them all seeing that it's on a camper, but we'll pull it back off this and put it on something real at some point. But a lot of adjustability in this. All these air bleeds and everything completely uh, tapped, ready to go. Screw those out, screw different ones in, really adjustable. But yeah, you see these brawlers all over the place and they're really good economy carburetor. So that being said, let's go ahead and put this on. I don't need you. I don't need any of you. I don't need any of you. You were already unplugged as it was. So yeah, basically that's how you get rid of all your vacuum bullshit. Essentially all you need is one for your uh, transmission, which is this guy right here. It's just gonna be manifold vacuum. And you want either ported or manifold for your distributor advance, depending on how you have your timing set and what else and whatnot. Beyond that, uh, if you have HVAC controls and you want them to still work, you'll have to keep vacuum from the manifold hooked up to your dash somewhere so that when you turn it to vent or floor or defrost, it actually moves or else no vacuum, it'll just stay on defrost. Actually, wait, hang on. I loaned this thing out once. I need to make sure that all my initial settings are still correct. I'm gonna push my red lever down for the choke, flip it over and yep, sure enough. <laughs> Good thing I Took this off the check. See right there, that little slot? That's our transfer slot. We want to make sure he's set to a square. And as you can tell, he is not set to a square. To fix this, I'm going to adjust our curb idle screw or our transfer slot screw right here on the throttle. It's upside down, I know. I'm going to turn him out until our transfer slot is at a square. All the while, I'm still holding that red lever down with my other hand. Little more. There we go. That's what we want to see right there. Now it won't diesel. And while we're talking about that, you know what? Probably a good time to mention. Why does dieseling happen? A lot of people think it's timing related. Uh, it's not. Well, it is, but it's not. It's caused by that transfer slot right there that I just show you being too far open. And when your engine is off, it's still able to pull fuel. And there's enough vacuum signal uh, at these Venturis that they're still pulling fuel. And it's pulling fuel down into the engine. And when it gets into the cylinder, your engine's still hot enough that it can literally run like a diesel. And it self-ignites and clunk, 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 and keeps running. Now, like I said, it's not your ignition causing it, but it's your improper setting of the ignition causing you to open the transfer slots too much, which is causing it. So in a roundabout way, this is the beginning of the problem, is that your initial timing is set too low. And when your initial timing is set too low, your idle is really low. And to compensate that, people go, oh, the idle's low, let me turn up the idle screw. Well, that's not the idle screw, it's an, and it's, it's an accurately named, it's the transfer slot screw. So what it's doing is opening those transfer slots, the transfer from off idle to driving. And when you open those up too far, it diesels. So to fix that, Start here, always start here with your engine tuning. Raise your initial timing to where it's supposed to be, turn these back down to a square, and I guarantee no more dieseling. I've got a great carburetor tuning video, I'll link it up here. 
you guys can check all that out there. As for this, I've got some rerouting hoses to do, uh, some fuel lines to hook up, a fuel filter to put in. La di da da, we'll be back. All right, another half turn on each side. <laughs> This is a split plane intake and our two planes are still well divided because of that space that we have. I'm going to put a little extra fuel down each side and we'll figure out which one of the four cylinders has the problem. Here's the passenger side. No real difference. Driver side. Oh. Runs a lot better. So something's wrong on one of the four cylinders that runs off this barrel. Let's see if we can find it. Everything's fine, what the hell? Well, I have no idea what the hell is going on. <laughs> At this point, it's either something internal that's weird, which like like a piston problem, where we're not having any compression, or a blown head gasket. I'm gonna throw plugs and wires on this, see if that does anything. And if it doesn't, I guess I'm out of time to care, so we're just gonna put it all back together and drive it five hours. What's the worst that could happen? All right, a little time has passed. I'm sweaty and dirty. Uh, I went to town, grabbed my compression tester, ran all the way down this bank, and started up this side. Everything's coming out between 135 and 150. Uh, make sure your throttle's all the way open when you're doing a compression test. But yeah, everything's been looking good so far. Until I got to the middle cylinder on this side. Yep. I bet you I move over one more and I get the same number. That's a head gasket. All right, she's hooked up. Let's find out. Is it head gasket, bent valve, or bad piston? Woo! So what happened is the typical Chevy thing, the bridge between the two cylinders burns out. It's really bad on small block Chevys because the exhaust ports are next to each other, but apparently the big blocks do it too. So now, do I put this five cylinder big block, sketchy tire, sketchy brake, no fridge, the AC kind of works, there is a coffee maker, ass have an ass camper back together, or do I just go get the $500 poop mobile ready? It's got brakes, tires, a 350, and a gas gauge that all work great. This is a serious conundrum. Morning. Morning. Welcome to the shit show. I'm only an hour late. I'm only two hours late. <laughs> so do we have a running camper? Um, ye no. I've decided we're going to play it safe and take the poop mobile. Oh. <laughs> Which is now version 2.0, uh, the unpooped mobile. Smells better? A lot better. All right, let's check it out. <laughs> so when we left off last night, I had a great internal debate. And let me tell you, it was a hell of an internal debate upon which camper to take. We had pros and cons for each. The poop mobile, our backup camper, uh, which we paid $500 for in another episode where we took it to Sigourney uh, once upon a time. <laughs> It's completely mechanically sound. The tires are like new. Uh, the brakes are perfect. The engine's perfect. The dash air conditioning works. This thing is in great shape. However, it doesn't have a speedometer or a fuel gauge and it smells like poop, along with it being much, much smaller for four adults to fit in. It'll sleep five people, but some of them should be, you know, short ones. So Phoenix would go in there. The one we've been working on for the entire episode Still has brakes that work, but are questionable. I don't trust them to drive five and a half hours doing a lot of stops if we take back road. Like every four miles would be a stop sign. The route was ridiculous. The engine obviously has a blown head gasket. It would probably still make it there and back just fine. I think the whole thing would make it there and back just fine. It's just way more stressful. And why beat on that 454 when it's still, it just needs a head gasket and we've got a good drive line for a project. So those things are coveted around here, at least in my opinion, because I can never find the damn things for less than like $1,800, I swear. Oh yeah. People want so much for a big block. And this one's free, why kill it? Yeah, it drives down the road a lot better, yep. but slower. I don't think, this one only does like 55. I think we can do 60 in that 65. I got motor. 350 Chevy oh. with four barrel. That one's, that one's a song. That thing runs great. 
This one already sang its song. <laughs> it runs like crap. The big awesome. thing for the weekend though is I don't want to take the highway or the interstate yep. on these. Oh yeah, there, there's the, that's what we're talking about. Yeah, those are really cracked. Yeah, that's, and this isn't even one of the worst ones. It made it all the way from Jefferson to here, which was surprising. But when you're driving five hours and 90 degree temps. Each way. Each way. <laughs> and you have to be back because people have to be to work. Yeah. And one of those blows out and you take out a family of four. Oh, it'd probably blow out the whole side of the camper. It, if one oh of those yeah. Big tires it'd probably kill us all inside. <laughs> so yeah, a little disappointing for the sake of the video that we're not taking this one, but don't worry. The big bastard will be back in either the form of itself or we'll rip the back off and make a car hauler out of it or we'll just rip the drive line off and put it in something fun. So we'll get back to this. We're still going to utilize this free camper for now. Let's pack all our shit into the poop mobile. Let's do it. And hit the road. Loading the last items. Radiator hose just started leaking. It's already all, it's like 11.30. I told Damn you, it. you shouldn't have brought me up that luck. <laughs> Why you gotta do me like this, poop mobile? I spent all day getting the poop out. And now the water pump just started seeping out of the little weep hole. Fix, what happens if you plug a weep hole? Um. I have no idea. <laughs> All right, so a little research on weep holes has shown me that essentially a water pump uh, is an impeller in the middle, obviously, casing around bearings on either side. Those bearings have seals that act like a wick. They're dry when it sits. Uh, fire a car up, water comes up to the pump again, and those seals wick the moisture into the center where the weep hole in that cavity is. And then when they wick, they expand and seal. The weep hole needs to be there to let the fluid that naturally seals every time you fire your vehicle up, lets a couple drops out. If you plug it, it can fill the fluid and build pressure in there and force that fluid through the bearings where grease is sealed. Grease, after 30 years, uh, is remaining in those bearings and it'll eat the bearings up right away. So plugging the weep hole is not an option. So our answer is uh, we filled up 10 gallons of water and a couple extra fuel jugs, and we're gonna hit the road and see what happens. We got a temp gauge, a mechanical temp gauge. So we should be able to keep an eye on this just fine. It's only three and a half hours if you do the interstate speeds, right, Move? Yeah. And we definitely can't do that. <laughs> okay. Are we ready? Let's do it. Are Still we? The NASCAR race. I, I don't know who we are. <laughs> We're gonna find out, that's for sure. Our temp's looking good. Oil pressure's looking good. We've got a long ways to go. We're gonna stop, get some gas, get some ice for the coolers. Hit the road, Kansas City. After filling up with gas, we are finally southbound in a cheap camper headed to Kansas City Speedway. After all our hard work to get to this point, only one challenge remained, and that was the interstate. Ah! Oh, oh, oh God! Oh, we're, we're fine. We're fine. We're fine. Everything is gonna be okay. Doesn't seem bad over here, honestly. Nah, you don't have one of these. <laughs> Oh, this is why the other camper would have been better for this. This thing like, oh, is so bad. <laughs> All right, Kansas City, there's our first sign. We got 200 miles left. Temps are creeping up there a little bit. I'm only talking like 10 degrees. I think it's just warmer outside. And we're working a little harder, so. Yeah, all work. It's terrifying. Terrible time of year to do this as far as gas prices go. 10 gallons. 10 gallons, all right. Is that 12 miles a gallon? 99 miles we've gone. 10 miles a gallon. 10 miles a gallon. 10 miles, you can take that. Fully I think loaded. We got eight, 10 last time. Since the last time I drove this, I tied the choke all the way open, so probably ran a little leaner now. Let's hit the road again, finish it out. We gotta stop at a Walmart somewhere, but other than that, about two hours out. Should be pretty smooth sailing. And it doesn't smell like poop anymore. That's my favorite part. All right, my favorite exit in all of Missouri. It's a tradition every time we go by. It's day 75. Uh -huh. I'm stuck back here. Well, this is familiar. This is where we got all our beer last year, except for it was dark out. We're still leaking, still leaking. She got to warm a couple times on that last jaunt. Uh, it came up to about 220, we could hear the fan start hasn't, spinning. Hasn't moved at all. I gotta wonder if that hole is just... Oh, dude. Do something. 
40 miles away, we can make that, no problem. Good. <laughs> Let's go get ourselves some beer and head to a racetrack. Hell yeah, we're in Kansas, baby. Woo! This is Kansas, Toto. <laughs> 15 minutes to go. How many miles? 13 miles. 20 minutes to go. <laughs> we're gonna pull it off. Oh, it's surging again. How many miles? <laughs> <laughs> We're back, Kansas City Speedway, and we brought another pile of crap camper. <laughs> it was sketchy for the first hour, but then we got used to its antics, and then it started kind of surging for the last half hour. So, in the end, are always fun. Now we just gotta figure out where to park. Once we got the camper through check-in and security, we were finally able to meet up with the last person of our team. The final member of our party has <laughs> arrived. Ladies and gentlemen, the Brian McTaggart himself. What do you Thank say you. we go in and find ourselves a camping site? Yes. Let's do it. Kansas Speedway. Here we go. Oh, this is going to be so much fun. Again. This is just fan. <laughs> fan, but from all sides. <laughs> After a bit of searching, we found our spot right in the center of turns three and four. But before we even had time to set up camp, we were distracted by what was parked across from us. Okay, we've landed, but never mind that. What the hell is that thing? That's like a Lincoln Mark 7 decided it wanted to grow up and be a real house. <laughs> That's what I wanted. <laughs> well, what do you say we set up camp and have a beer? Yep. Plan. Got mine. <laughs> we had a new spot this year, but nonetheless, it was great to be back at Kansas City Speedway. We set to work hanging up our flags and signs, and then immediately checked out the awesome view we had in the center of turn three and four. Perfect views up here on top of the camper. As soon as that was done, we sat down for a couple cold ones, and before you knew it, the sun was well below the horizon. Well, it's dark and it sounds like a generator, but essentially, camp is set up. We're ready for the party to start tomorrow. Right, random silhouettes. Yeah. I, okay, it's the silhouettes thing, it's a verbal response is what I need. I, I got two thumbs up and a yeah. So, so thank you. No, I still can't see that. We'll be back. <laughs> Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to Saturday at Kansas City Speedway as we watch the sunrise on the track and the move. <laughs> I'm gonna fire up a little charcoal grill, get these guys some breakfast going, and it's time to start the day. Oh man, I'm excited for this. After breakfast, the jets flew over, we cracked open a couple beers, and then watched all the team trucks roll into the infield. Well, most of us did anyway. Good morning. Good morning. You slept till like... 8.07? 8.07, I guess. I woke up this morning, I'm like, it's gotta be like 8.30. I'm like, it's 6 o'clock and they're blaring music <laughs> It was literally 6.30 they started the music. I was like, that's... It's a little early in my book. <laughs> that's all right. Let's start the day. Let's start you off right. All right, yeah, that's, I'll take a of soda. That was a Coke, sorry, hang on. Cup of coffee. <laughs> Let's get to it. Like a fresh apple in the morning. A few beers later, the Arca series fires up for some practice laps, and conversation is suddenly much more difficult. While Mook was making a drink in the break between practice and qualifying, I fired up the grill to get us some lunch going. I also took this time to get a look at our schedule with Brian. All right, we have to talk really loud and consistently because they play a lot of music and that's bad for copyright claims. So what are you seeing there, sir? So we have our schedule for today. At 5.30 a.m. they started opening credentials. At 6.30 a.m. they started playing rock music to wake everybody up. Five. One o'clock is the Menard Series Dutch Boy 150. That's the Arca Series. Trucks are 7 p.m. tonight. Hell yeah, night race. Yeah. Yes. Night race, truck race. Night race. Night race, truck race. Night race. 
know what to do with all the extra space on the grill. This is a big son of a gun. <laughs> Six, a lot to manage. Six, six. After lunch, I started to realize there was something missing this year. None of our neighbors had walked up and offered us a beer or a burger, and everyone was chilling in the air-conditioned camper. I had a hunch of what was going on, so Mook and I walked to turn two to find some people from last year. Sure enough, that's where the party was. Okay, so the Arca series is about to start, and if you'll notice around us, we're missing one very large aspect we had last year, and that is the party, the atmosphere, the reason you come to the track instead of watching it on TV, meeting new friends, having a blast, having some beers, and all we have is a grass field. So, we're gonna pile all this back into the camper and go over to turn two. That's the party. This is the atmosphere we come to see. Even though the view of the track from our new spot was much worse, we had a way, way better time. This was the reason we came to Kansas City Speedway. The best view for any race is your couch, but the most fun is at the track. This is better. This is NASCAR. All right, so the ARCA race is already over. We missed the whole thing thing, essentially. Number two, according to this poll, was your race winner. We got some new friends already. We got some margaritas that was brought to us by the other guys. This, this is the camping experience we come for. You can watch the race on TV from home, but where's the fun in that? It's currently 93 degrees outside. No breeze, hot as hell. So we're gonna cool off for a bit. Come truck series tonight, we should be good to go. What better way to cool off than a hydration session? Absolutely. <laughs> I got a fish. A fish koozie. At this point, it was time to put down the camera, pick up a beer, and make some new friends. The list of which has some very unique names on it this year. Besides all the guys next to us who happen to also be from Iowa, Chase Cabry and Haley Deegan both stopped by to say hi. If you don't know them, they're also fellow YouTubers, but they like to race in NASCAR races every weekend. Huge thanks to those two for stopping by and hanging out for a little bit. Always great to make more friends in the industry. On top of that, I know that made some of the people's days right around us. Before long, it was time to kick things off for our truck race with the National Anthem. Are oh, you Ryan? Me? No! Hey, that was the last one in existence! I'm kidding. Okay. It's okay, it's like a Ford Focus taillight. We got no, it. it's not. <laughs> Let's go racing! <laughs> Alrighty, welcome to Saturday afternoon. We survived our hydration sessions just fine, except for the tail light. They did not survive. It's time now for the truck race. Drivers, start your engine! Brian, nothing happened. I know. What? Come on. I think they missed a point. Lever, lever, button. I think it's how it works. Uh, do, do we wind up at an EV race? What? Come on. Why do I just hear a Honda? <laughs> I don't even hear the cranking. No, I. Having done this twice now, I have to say the night race is definitely my favorite. Seeing these trucks rip around under the lights is awesome. However, if I made a list of things that were not awesome, somewhere near the top would be Phoenix spilling your beer. Thankfully, there was the redeeming feature of him having to sit in the puddle for the rest of the race. Who's gonna win the race? Oh! Yeah, I think it's gonna be 38. He's got it. Yeah, that guy is fast. He's led 50 laps in first place for the last three years. Jesus. Jane Smith. That first five lineup has not changed in at least half the race. Home the trophy for your camper, your world truck series for the 
What was this race called? Heart of America 200. Heart of America 200. How about the hydration session? Bush light, fireworks. That's in the awesome. infield of Kansas City. For sure. In turn two. <laughs> yeah, not turn four. <laughs> Don't go to turn three and four. <laughs> As the stands emptied out and the fireworks went off in the distance, we climbed down from the camper to settle in for a night of bush light and cool summer nights. Nothing like a deer stick, a bush light, and NASCAR to end the night. I don't think that's how it went the first I didn't time. Hear it quite right. I think I heard meat stick and in my mouth. No, 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 no. Uh -huh. How are we doing? Huh? <laughs> I thought you were supposed to show up tomorrow. Well, you know, I had to do a, a, a practice round. Oh, okay. Hey, can I get your autograph? Yeah, yeah. Can I sign my forehead? <laughs> no. Oh, 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 You're me do this time. I'll see you at three. All right. <laughs> Good luck. Your Kansas City Speedway is problem now. Morning, Mook. Good morning. I'm Brian. Wow. <laughs> and of course, you next. <laughs> Passed out. Let's get breakfast going. The next morning, when we woke up, we were greeted by a very ominous set of clouds rolling across the sky, and it wasn't long at all before they opened up. That's hail. Yeah. Hell yeah. I'm glad we didn't bring a truck. Good morning, Phoenix! How are you? The race started, as you can tell. <laughs> Holy shit! Seeing that we were going to be inside for a while, I found this to be the perfect time to fire up the old stove and get breakfast going for everyone. One good thing about the rain is it gave us a nice slow start to our Sunday, and everyone got to catch up on some much needed sleep. So the rain's still coming down this morning at Kansas City Speedway, and I decided instead of utilizing, you know, the camper bathroom in the camper and putting it back to its original origins of the poop mobile, or even the porta potty that's in our campsite, I'm going to walk down to the actual bona fide bathrooms they have here spread all throughout the infield and show you guys just how clean all this is and how nice of an experience the infield of Kansas City Speedway really is. Let's go check it out. Saying the facilities and the campgrounds of Kansas City Speedway are nice would be a serious understatement for most campgrounds. The bathrooms are super clean. The porta potties always look brand new. I've never seen an empty toilet paper roll or even an overflowing trash can, which are everywhere by the way. You seriously don't have to walk more than 50 feet to find one. If you need more ice, you can head over near the driver's area and buy it from the back of a truck. And there's always a cleaning truck driving around. These guys are the real heroes of the weekend, so I took a moment to interview one of them and ask what kind of operation they run here at Kansas City Speedway. Hey man, how's it going? What's going on, man? So, okay, question for you. How often do you guys go through the porta potties and whatnot on the infield? Well, we clean them like every, every morning. You know what I'm saying? We, you know, that's our route. We clean it every morning. And then sometimes we spot check in the afternoon. Just okay. to make sure they got the kitchen and everything. How many trucks you got going around? Um, in the rear field, we got like three. You know three or four? We don't need number two because the guy with real experience, he guys got experience, so they know, they know what to do. Yeah, I got to say, it's some of the cleanest I've seen around here. And, and you offer services for trailers as well? Yes, we service trailers. Well, we service all uh, uh, the people got the shower trailers too. We got them and everything, man. So. I mean, we're just going and trying to give the community, you no, know, not the community, but um, the guys like him, the RV, so they have a good time, you know what I'm saying, make sure, you know, you know what I'm saying, they enjoy themselves and they got everything they need. So well, hey, thank you very much for all your work this weekend. Let us know this, that we take care of our customers. Oh, yeah. So make sure it's clean. Oh, when yeah. you go in there, you think you're at home. <laughs> <laughs> well, hey, thank you very much. So there you have it. Trash cans every 50 feet, super clean bathrooms, and of course, some of the best weekend experiences anyone could ask for. Well, I would be lying if I said we all stayed dry, but well, that's okay, because if I've ever learned one thing is you can't stop the party here at Kansas City Speedway. It's still gonna be a good day, and we're still gonna be racing later this afternoon. Let's have a hydration session about it. Oh, breakfast. Breakfast. <laughs> We've got people grilling, the beers are out already. It is time to start 
the race day. I think that starts around two, so we got a couple hours. Let's have some have some beers and watch some racing. Water? Yeah, that's you, Phoenix. Have some beers. Come on, little buddy. I just witnessed a miracle. Oh look, more miracles. Good news? This is not copyright music, I can promise you that much. Perfect. Good be roll music. <laughs> This is our new intro. <laughs> Tear it up, Luke. Come two o'clock, the track was dry, and we were blessed with two A10 Warthogs as we kicked off the Advent Health 400. Kansas Speedway being a one and a half mile track, the cars can get pretty spread out and go on for quite a while without a caution. But worry not, if you ever get bored watching the cars, there's plenty of other stuff happening around you to keep you very entertained. Prior to the caution, Tyler Reddick was running him down. Let's see what happens now as we get ready to go back up. While Mook was hard at work directing traffic, I apparently decided it was the perfect time to pass out in my chair on top of the camper. I can now say I understand the importance of the midday power nap John took last year. Eventually I came back to life and got back to work distributing free stickers to anyone who walked past. I bet I threw 50 of these things at people and out of everybody only one guy stopped to pick one up. And it was the poor dude holding a 20 pound camera and all of his gear. I don't know who you are sir, but I hope you enjoyed that sticker, cause you definitely worked for it. That's how many laps are left. How many? 69. Nice. I'm in disguise. Whoever is in five is driving his balls off. He's painted the wall to the side of his car. I saw, I caught that on camera actually. Good. After a beautiful set of pirouettes in turn 3 and 4, the number 9 car brings out the caution. Unfortunately for us, this shuffles our field so that Kyle Busch is in the lead again. If you remember from last year, he won both races we watched. At this point, our favorite drivers on the racetrack are whoever is right behind him and especially anyone that could get in front of him. As the checkered flag approached, number five held a steady lead over Kyle Busch. To celebrate, I decided to have an extra hamburger patty, but Mook put it into orbit instead of tossing it to me. And with that, Kurt Busch takes home the checkered flag for the Advent Health 400. I finally went to the cup race and Kyle Busch didn't win. With all the racing for the weekend concluded, we decided to leave Sunday night so we could get home Monday in time for work. Let's do it. Let's hit the road. And with that, we conclude another awesome weekend at Kansas City Speedway. Pulling out of the gates, we put the hammer down for the 250 mile drive home. And once again, our cheap pile of crap camper did it flawlessly. We traveled exactly zero miles. <laughs> the whole thing was fake. <laughs> all right. Well, that's that. We got home late last night. I uh, got the camper all unpacked today, cleaned up, ready for its next 
flawless adventure whenever that may be. Our coolant leak has seemingly fixed itself. I think those seals need to just get a little moisture on them. When we checked the coolant down at the racetrack, we were missing almost none. So I think it was literally just leaking at idle. Either way, the poop mobile lives on. And for all those wondering, no, this is not going to be for sale. This is our good camper, as you could tell. This is the backup plan that we apparently desperately need now and then. I want to thank Kansas City Speedway for putting on another great event and thank all of our immediate neighbors on turn two for making that the best turn on the track. Beer everywhere, burritos. You can't walk 10 feet without finding some form of hospitality being thrown your way out there at Kansas City Speedway. It is a great atmosphere and it is very affordable. To get the camper in at the track side, the more expensive spot, it was about 700 bucks then 110 bucks per head. As far as the Winnebago goes, I don't know. Good drive line in that. The rest of it, not so much. Either way, that's going to conclude this episode of Junkyard Digs. I hope you guys enjoyed. Thank you for watching. Thank you for all those at the track that helped us. And thanks to all my friends for going along and making it another great weekend. We'll see you guys out there. Peace.